Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Mohammed, and today we're going to be discussing how we can contenderize our application with Podman. We're going to be going through some of the installation process, some of the basic commands that we're going to be needing in order for us to jump start with Podman, and then we're going to be seeing how we can contenderize our .NET web application with Podman. So let's get started. So what I have here is the Podman website, which is podman.io. And as we can see here, Podman is a free open source container tools that we can actually utilize to containerize our application. So the main difference between Podman and Docker is Podman is daemonless which means that it does not require root permission to run and it does not have any license fees that we might need in order for it to run it inside our desktop. So as well, Podman does not require any special security permission similar to Docker because Docker runs as root. On the other hand, Podman does not require us to be in a root account in order for us to run. So with that in place, let us see how we can actually get started with Podman. So as we can see here, if we click on the download button, we can see we can directly download Podman desktop and or we can actually utilize the Podman CLI for macOS. So if we go to Podman desktop and I'm going to open both of them right now. So as you can see here, both of them are getting downloaded in order for them to be installed. I have already done this before. So let me just cancel those downloads. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open first Podman desktop. So as you can see here, once the installation process has completed, you'll be able to see something similar to this. And this is the Podman desktop. It's a pretty straightforward tool where basically once it has been installed, it will ask you what types of other information or other features you want to install with it. So if you want to install Minikube, you want to install Docker, you want to install OpenShift. So you can basically do all of that. So I highly recommend that you have in, uh, Docker installed as well as Minikube installed if you need to use Kubernetes, of course, on top of Podman. So once you have this on the right hand, left hand side, what you have here is basically a copy of all of the running uh, images or containers that you might have. If you have not done anything, so this, this will be completely empty. But because I have already experimented with a bit, I already have some information here. Here you can see I have pods and pods basically means, so the idea behind Podman is from the name pods. Pods are basically the same construct as they currently exist within Kubernetes, which means if I am trying to host my application within Kubernetes, Docker containerizing my application within Podman is a step towards that end goal because basically Kubernetes rely on pods to run all of the application and Podman have the same structure of pod that Kubernetes utilizes. So we're going to be seeing how we can create pods and running our application within pods in order for us to migrate them to Kubernetes later on. But for now, we're going to be, this is the main structure of pods and why we do want them here. Then if we go down here, we can see all of the images that we created. And again, if you just installed it, it will be completely empty for you. And lastly, here we're going to have volumes. Once you have a volume, you'll be able to actually see it here and explore it. So we can see the user interface is pretty straightforward. It's straight to the point. There's not a lot of different configuration that is complicated for us to utilize. And the last thing, if we go here to settings, we can see here within the settings, we are able to see a lot of different configuration that we are actually able to control. So here we can see that we have our Podman machine and this is just for information. Uh, so Podman, the way it actually runs, it creates a virtual Linux environment inside your computer. So what it does here in order for it to containerize the application, what it does, it has a Fedora Linux operating system running in a virtual machine in the background. And whenever we're doing any types of containerization, it will go through the Fedora operating system. It will containerize it there and then we can actually access it. So here we can see when we see the disk space, the memory, this is all what the Fedora Dora virtual machine is actually utilizing in order for it to run. I just thought that this is really important. If you actually see some performance hit yeah, and you're running Podman, this could be one of the main reasons. And the other on the left hand side, we can see that we have proxies. If you want to have proxy for our Podman, we have the different registries so we can connect to different con container registries like Docker Hub, GitHub, Red Hat, Quay, and Google Container Registry. As well, we can utilize the AWS and Azure ones. We have different authentication tools if you want to utilize them, some CLI tools if, we, if needed be, and some Kubernetes tool as well. So all of these different uh, configuration are really available for us to actually take the best of both worlds of Docker and the best of, of Podman, which is the security, the open source, etc. So now we have this installed. What we want to do is we want to open our terminals and start experimenting with some commands so we can actually get familiar with Podman. So I'm going to open my terminal. And the first command that we want to run within our terminal is going to be our hello world. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check the version of Podman. And this is a way we can actually see if Podman has been installed successfully. So I'm going to put podman dash dash version and as we can see i'm running on version 4.9.3 and this is the latest version by the time of this recording which means podman is running success then i want to run my hello world so i'm going to put podman run hello dash world and once i run this we can see that it's actually trying to resolve so let's understand what's going on here as we can see here the run hello world is not available locally on my machine so what it's doing here is trying to pull it from another container registry the similar concept that's happened within docker once it actually find that container registry and the image it will what it does is actually 
actually pull it down to my local environment then it actually configure it inside my local machine and then it's actually run it so once it has downloaded it as we can see here it was able to run podman we can see the three we can see the icon here as well as we can see different links for the project itself as we can see here there's similar functionality as docker and how actually they manage the images so that's really good so now with that we had it our hello world and we can make sure that everything is running successfully let us try to pull a custom image so i'm going to clear this and in order for me to do this i'm going to actually utilize the engine x image so in order for me to pull it down into my machine i'm going to put podman pull similar command to docker and i'm going to utilize the engine x again what it's doing here is trying to find it within the local environment it's not so then it's going to actually docker.io as you can see here because it wasn't able to find it locally and then it's pulling it down from there so now i have basically a image uh, available local in my machine within podman so if i want to see all of those images available running locally i can put podman if i want to see the images i put podman images and as you can see here i have my podman hello and we have my nginx available for me so these are the two images that are currently available within my machine at the moment let me clear this up so now that we have actually got our nginx available so if we go here we could put podman images we're able to see it here if i want to run my nginx let's see how we can actually run a container within podman so that's going to be also straightforward similar command to what we use in docker so we're going to put podman run I'm going to make sure that it actually delete the image, uh, the container once it's actually finished. I want to utilize a port 8080 to connect to it. And I'm going to specify the name of Nginx. So now, as you can see here, my Nginx is actually running. And what I can do is I can go to my web browser and go to port 8080. And now if I do this, you can see that I have Nginx running on my machine. If I stop this right now, it stops. And if I can basically do as well, I can change this to 8, port 8083, for example. And I can tell it that it needs to run in detach mode. So I can put dash D. And now we can see that my application is running and now if i go here to port 8083 we can see it's actually running again and if i go to let's clear this up if i want to see my running containers i can put podman container dash a if i want to see the running container i can podman ps dash a and as we can see here i see i can see all of my running containers and if i make this a bit bigger we can see here that i have my latest version of engine x or basically the image is running engine x is currently running we can see it's been up for like almost 39 seconds we can see the port that i'm using to connect to which is port 8083 and we can see it's actually running so now if i run this again we should see the time has incremented so we can see it now it has been that minute so if i want to stop this container from running because it's running now in detached mode so we can see it's actually running the way i do that is pretty straightforward i put podman stop and what i do is i can take the id of this container and i add it here let's add the space first and now we can see it stopped so if i first of all run docker ps dash a again so if i want to verify that stop i can put podman ps dash a and now we can see it has stopped and if i come here and try to refresh this we're going to see we're going to getting a message unable to connect okay great so now that we have understood how we can actually put an image run a container and then stop it we're going to be seeing right now how we can actually create a pod and then we're going to be seeing how we can run a container inside this pod and that's going to be pretty straightforward so let me clear this up so now if i want to create my pod it's going to be pretty straightforward so with podman pod create i give it a name i call it dot not pod and now we can see it has been created successfully now if i want to run an image inside this pod what i do is podman run put in attach mode then i specify the pod that i want and it's going to be dot not pod and then i specify the image that i want to run which is engine x and then i run this and now we can see that this is actually running and now what i can do i can put podman ps dash a and now as you can see here i have my latest engine x running and as we can see here that it is created eight seconds ago and what i can do as well if i go back to my dashboard here if i go to pods you can see that i have my dot not pod running and inside of it you can see that i have two containers so if i open this up as you can see here i have inside my container i see that nginx is actually running inside so we can see here that this is the logs that i can see and we can see here that this is the inspect that i can actually utilize in order for me to see what is running within my pod so we can see here that this is a really interesting way to actually try to mimic a live environment of a container pod inside my local environment so now that we have done this let us see now if we create a web application how easy it is to utilize podman to actually containerize it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open rider and i'm just gonna click on new solution and i'm gonna create a simple i'm gonna call it my podman api and i'm gonna create an api here let's say web api c sharp i'm gonna use docker support for linux anything else that should be fine let me just change the directory i'm gonna put it v6 and i'm gonna click on create so now as we can see here that my application has installed successfully or basically my project has been running successfully as you can see here also i got a docker file which is automatically out of the box. And if I want to create an image 
for my container or sorry for my web api so it will run within podman you'll be surprised that i can actually utilize a docker file in order for me to do so because basically they are all uh, based on the open standard and basically because of that i can utilize docker files with podman in order for me to create container images for my applications so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna move this to the root directory and now that is inside my root directory what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open my terminal and within my terminal i'm gonna run the following command so it's gonna be podman build and i'm gonna give it a sample api or sample podman api and as we can see here what i was able to do i specified the podman i specified the build command and then I gave it a tag and we gave it the dot because it needs to find the docker file and then what it does here is actually pulling the image and it's actually building it for me and we can see once it does, does this let's give it a few seconds to complete so now as we can see here it has finished containerizing my image uh, my application to into an image and now what I can do is I can run the following command let's clear this up I can put podman images and as we can see here I have my sample podman API available for me we can see it has been created 16 seconds ago and because this is is automatically available for me what i can do is i can directly utilize it so if i want to run it i can just put podman run and then i can specify the port for example port 8082 something like that or port 8085 to port 8080 and then what i can do also i can specify the name which is going to be sample podman api and it will run from there so let us first run it locally before we run it within podman so now i'm going to run my application again this is an empty application so i'm just not going to have anything available to it so we're and I have only the basic weather API and this available because it's going to be developed in or running in a development mode but once I publish it it will be available in production mode so this will not be available but let's just run it to see if everything running into place now if I run this we'll be able to see that I have my application running within Podman okay perfect so this is how simple it is in order for us to create a container application of our web API within Podman the few simple commands that we have utilized are pretty similar to the docker ones we can can see the similarity here and basically podman is going to be a very powerful tool specifically that docker uh, a lot of its features is going to become paid very soon and basically if we want to actually utilize uh, kubernetes we can see how we're running an application within pods locally to help us mimic that environment and help us build a better kubernetes cluster for our application so i hope this video was helpful if it was please like share and subscribe if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day